millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hiya, Pat. Hello, is that Gabby? It's uh, me, and welcome all How to... How are you, mate? Yeah, welcome all to my 70s with... Dodworth legend, Mr. Pat Howard, <laughs> and also, let's say, Barnsley, Newcastle, Arsenal, Birmingham, Portland Timbers, and Berry legend as well. And by the way, happy anniversary, sir. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Do you know what the anniversary is for? I'm just trying to think. <laughs> I'm going to take you back 48 years and let's start at St. Really? James's Park on the 24th of January, 1972, when out of the hat, after Newcastle United, come Hereford. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's that one, is it? Yeah, All it's, right. it's that one, yeah. Yeah. It's, What's it's, your it's, memories of that game? Yeah, I think we, we were drawn against them and we played them at home the first game. Yeah. And uh, they got off to a really good start. I, I don't know if it was a mistake on my part, but I think I misjudged it, a long ball from the kickoff. Um, believe it or not, one of their lads sort of uh, made a, a great run and, and smashed it into the back of the net. So we got off to a bad start, you know, at Newcastle. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think we, with teams like that, uh, Gary, you've got to take your chances, haven't you? Yes. And we had loads of chances. But anyway, we ended up with a draw and we had to go there, you know, for the replay. And then the replay was cancelled twice. So we're in a hotel down there for an extra two or three days because the conditions were really bad and uh, it was an awful pitch that they played on. But, um, you know, that that's football, isn't it? You you win or lose, but you don't want to be losing to, you know, part-time players, do you really? So it came as a, a big shock uh, and it, and the to repl- get knocked out by them. Yeah, and the replay was um, was on the 5th of, of February. Um, pro- pos- what? So that'd be, what, 10 days after? Because what used to happen in the old days is the uh, if you played on the Saturday, you'd have the replay like the following Tuesday or Wednesday. I mean, now yeah. it's a modern thing that it's 10 days after. But in effect, it was 10 days after because of inclement weather in, in those days in 1972. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I think the first replay uh, was at Everton, uh, Gary, yeah. And uh, I played in the first one. And, uh, you know, we, it was still a draw. And then a, f- a couple of days later, I do believe, uh, I was suspended. And, uh, you know, they, they, we played them and we, uh, we, we managed to, you know. So, but, um, yeah, they, these games, they all go into one, don't they? I'm starting to talk about another game there. Sorry about that, I was going to say, because yeah, that, 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 that game I'm like... there, that game, I'm thinking, hang on a minute, Pat. It was 1972. You've skipped a couple of years because you're talking about Forrest now in that am, game yeah. that you didn't play because yeah. you got sent off, sir, didn't you? <laughs> I did, yeah, yeah. But, uh, sorry, going back to, to that, um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a sad day isn't it, when a, a non-league team will, knocks you out. And Joe Harvey, I felt really sick for him. I, I felt sick for everybody else, but we, we had to take it, you know. But, um, you know, it created a lot of newspaper articles and it was on the match of the day. I went to the football museum the other day in Manchester uh, I was doing a little bit of a chat there and they have all televisions all around and, and walking past one of the televisions, a friend of mine who had invited me says, look, you know what that game is, don't you? That's that's Hereford and you there, Newcastle, look at you there. Why didn't you get in the, in the way with that shot that scored the winning goal? So, yeah, times, uh, them times were hard times and, uh, you know, nobody wants to get beaten by... A lesser opposition, so but uh, it had to be. 
What time of the day did it kick off? It was also John Motson's first commentary game, wasn't it? Yeah, was it, it was, an early it? kickoff because of floodlights? I, I, I seem to remember as a schoolboy um, <laughs> coming home from school and the game being kicked off early, but that might be my memory playing tricks on me. You might be right there, actually. You might be right. Uh, I'm not 100% sure mm. on that one. But uh, the, the the playing conditions were abysmal, really. Like I say, the, the pitch... It was diabolical, yeah. but um, you know you, you can't blame that because we were professional players. We've got Malcolm McDonald, we've got John Tudor, Bobby Moncker. We've got all of us in the team, and we should have been good enough to sort them out. But on the day, there wasn't a right lot in it. But then it just takes one fantastic yeah. shot from a long way out that goes in the top corner. Before you know it, that's it. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, thanks for reminding me of that one. That's okay, Pat. My pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to stay at Edgar Street briefly because that strike from Ronnie Radford was one of the goals of the season, wasn't it, in 1972? It was a thunderbolt of a shot. <laughs> it certainly was, yeah. It's just, uh, I can I can remember it sort of, you know, it's a good bit above my head and I'm yeah. thinking that's going to be close, that. You know, as he's had the shot, I thought that's going to be close. And uh, obviously it went in, and everybody knows about the situation after, don't they? Uh, you know, a first division club being knocked out by a non-league side, which it's never happened a lot, has it? Never happened a lot, but uh, it, it certainly happened that day. It's happened a couple of times to my team, Birmingham City. We're going to talk about Blues a little bit later, because you did join Birmingham in 1977. But we got beat yeah. by uh, by Altrincham, and then we also got knocked out by Kidderminster as well. So I know where you're coming from, being beaten by non-league opposition. But pitches like that are great levellers. The FA Cup is a great leveller. We're going to fast forward. We did cover yeah. it in a chapter of my life. The 1974 game against Forest, that was possibly arguably the most controversial FA Cup tie of all time, wasn't it? I would have thought so, yeah. Yeah, we'd, we'd drawn at home against Forest, and, uh, you know, there's a massive crowd there, 55, 57,000 there, you know. So, uh, But we get off to a bad start against Forest, and they take an early lead, and I think they get another as well. And then we pull one back, and then, uh, you know, the... This story I've told many times, yeah. and the uh, they get a penalty, and um, one of our players, David Craig, has miscued. I think it was either David Craig or Bobby Monker has mis- miscued a, a clearance, and he's knocked it back into our own box, and they had Duncan McKenzie up front, and uh, in my mind, Duncan McKenzie let David Craig because it was going near Duncan McKenzie. Yeah. It, you know, it, it was in my mind that he just stood his ground, Duncan McKenzie, and David Craig's looking at the ball, and he just piles into the back of him. A penalty. So, as you can imagine, we weren't happy. We were losing 2-1. And I start sort of remonstrating with Gordon Q, the referee. And uh, I'm going on at him, and I'm saying this, that, and the other. That's never a penalty. That's, that's him cheating there, you know. The, you know, and... Uh, he says, uh, yeah, no, 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 that's a penalty. So I keep going on and on. And then he, he starts to say, I'm going to send you off. And I said, I'm not going to get, I'm not going to go off. If you say I'm, you're going to send me off, you cause the biggest riot ever here, you. This is me to Gordon Q. Because I was really irate about the decision. I'm sending you off. I said, I'm, I'm just not going to go off. But he says, I'll get, I'll get people on to, to take you off. So anyway, Good long story short, I eventually sort of walk off, my head's bowed, and they take the penalty, and they, it's 3-1. Yep. Yeah, well taken penalty, 3-1. But unbelievably, with Newcastle with 10 men, uh, came back, and they won 4-3 with 10 men. Yep. So, like I always say, they didn't really miss me when I went off, but yeah. It, it caused all headlines on the television, newspapers, wherever. And they, Nottingham Forest, complained with regard to all the fans running on the pitch and, you know, they, they got pushed about a little bit. And they complained and uh, they managed to get a replay, you know, like I was saying a, a little bit earlier there. And they got a replay at Everton. Uh, like I say, I played in the first one and then Malcolm McDonald, the second replay, 
uh, he managed to get a goal, Malcolm. So we knocked him out. But it was a very, very eventful day, that one. And it's one that lasts in my memory. <laughs> Malcolm was always good for a cup goal, wasn't he? Absolutely prolific and, and scored in every round of that cup, apart from the final against the yeah. Liverpool. Yeah, that's right, yeah. I mean, it, we, I've said it many times, he was a tremendous player. Um, he was that quick, you wouldn't believe it, yeah. really. I mean, I did play against him before I joined Newcastle and I, I knew what he was all about, you know, when he was at Luton. You know, I'd played against him with Barnsley then. God, what about the pace? Unbelievable pace. Uh, and strong and brave as well. His work rate could have been worked on a little bit more, mm-hmm. but... Um, he always used to say, never mind my work rate, put your goals on the table. One of them, that was his, his little comments that he would make to one or two of us that would have a go at him a bit. But, uh, yeah, a great player and great to have in your team. You get 20 goals a season, 25 goals a season. You know you know he's going to finish things off. But it, it, sorry, Gabby. Sorry, you, your career started in your hometown of Barnsley, and you, you've alluded to that playing against Luton, against Malcolm. You yeah, played 100, 177 games for Barnsley. How, <laughs> how did that move come about to Newcastle? Was Joe Harvey monitoring you for some time? I think there'd always been a little bit in the press about you know Newcastle uh, keeping an eye on uh, you know Pat Howard at Barnsley, yeah. that kind of thing, but. Yeah, I, I played a lot of games for Barnsley. I mean, one of the seasons I didn't miss a game. Mm. And, like, you, you start sort of, you know, I started thinking, well, I need to start getting some money. Because in them days, uh, Gabby, the wages were diabolical. Yep. We, and, and, I mean, they're very, very good now, aren't they? Yes. But then I was going in the, I went in the office as much as to say I want another 20 quid or 25 quid. No way, you're not getting nothing. Mm. So... I, I just said, well, I want to go. If if you can't give me, you know, a rise on my wages, on the money that I'm getting now, I want to go. Yep. And, uh, you know, the Barsley manager wasn't happy with that. And uh, he says, your head's bigger than that door, you. How do you get your head through that door? Who do you think you are, you? To me, like, I said, well, <laughs> never mind that. You get me on that list and I want to go. So that's how it started. And then before you know it, uh, Newcastle came in. Who was and, the... uh, sorry, sorry, Pat. Who was the Barnsley manager at the time? Uh, a Scottish gentleman called Johnny Steele. Okay. Yeah, one of the old school. Yeah. But um, I think, in a way, they, they would have wanted to let me go as well because, you know, in them days, they, they were desperate for money. Yes. And, like, they're getting an absolute fortune for me, you know, 21 grand. It was a lot of money then. Mm. <laughs> but it no, was, it wasn't. wasn't it? In 1971, <laughs> it was a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But they wanted that transfer fee, you know, to get keep the club afloat. Mm. And uh, yeah, that it was it was great when Joe Harvey came down, and uh, you know the Barnsley manager had been to where I live, didn't have a phone, and I'm out gardening, and my wife said uh, the Barnsley manager's at the door. So I thought, right, yeah, okay. Yeah, I thought she was taking the mickey, really, but he was there. He says, uh, I want you to come down to the club at two o'clock this afternoon and make sure you look smart. And I, th- I said, why? He says, we'll find out when you get there. Yeah. So as I go down to Barnsley uh, to the club, I see this big car outside and uh, I think, all right, I wonder who that is. So I look in the back of the car and the uh, the supplier's name was so and so Gateshead, and I'm thinking I'm not going to be signing for Gateshead here, am I? <laughs> you know, like I'm going down the leagues. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, Gateshead. So I went in, and uh, you know, uh, Joe Harvey was stood there, and he says, "Pat, I want you to sign for us at Newcastle United. I've watched you for quite a while, and I want you to sign for us." And then there you go, started talking terms a little bit. And uh, what I decided to do there was to just, just see how, how desperate Barnsley were. And I said, I said to my manager, Johnny Steele, 
if I don't get £2,000 out of this, which is a lot of money then. Yep. That was a lot of money, £2,000. If I, if you don't write £2,000 into my contract with Newcastle, I'm not going. And, and what? No chance. You've got no chance. I says, well, it's up to you. You know, if, if you don't do it, I'm not going to go. So I was risking yeah. getting my career off it to the highest level. And anyway, they called a, a quick board meeting and, uh, the, you know, the manager came out and says, well, you know, we're going to give you the two grand. But he says, you, I don't want to ever see you at this uh, club again. Wow. Well, yeah, that's what he said. Yeah, yeah. Which is fair comment. That's up to him, isn't it? But it was a lot of money then, uh, Gabby, yeah, two did, grand. Did so you he ever, got wrote into my contract and away I went. Did you ever go back to Barnsley out of interest? <laughs> <laughs> what, just to stir it up? Oh, yeah, Beyond yeah. time. Ryan Reynolds here for, I guess, my 100th Mint commercial. No, 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 no. I mean, honestly, when I started this, I thought I only have to do like four of these. I mean, it's unlimited premium wireless for $15 a month. How are there still people paying two or three times that much? I'm sorry, I shouldn't be victim blaming here. Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch whenever you're ready. $45 upfront payment equivalent to $15 per month. New customers on first three-month plan only. Taxes and fees extra. Speed slower above 40 gigabytes. See details. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom. Like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Yeah. Long time, yeah. yeah. But he, uh, no, I never went back really over the last two the the two or three years that I signed for Newcastle. Yeah. I never really went back watching a game there. So uh, uh, yeah, that's what he said. You're yeah. not going to be welcome here, so don't you ever come back here. Now in a in a shooting interview, they always used to do a focus on a player. It it did suggest well you did, you told the um the, the reporter that one of your dislikes was gardening. <laughs> it was actually, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was. So did you miss no, his it... force you to do the how bad was your garden that day? <laughs> it needed sorting out actually. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. But I thought she was kidding, you know, when she came yeah. to the door. It came to me in the in the garden there. But no phones, you see, it didn't have a phone. No. And it wasn't the year for mobile phones, was it? No, but it didn't have a landline. Yeah. We didn't have a landline, no, you know, no. so it just shows you've done it all them years ago. That didn't have a phone for maybe a year after that. So, and, uh, <laughs> and your time at Newcastle was was relatively successful, wasn't it? And, and on the back of the nineteen sixty nine um, first cup win against yeah. Wimpest Dozer, Newcastle yeah. must have had a little bit of money because in seventy one they bought in Malcolm. They also yeah. brought in uh, Terry Hibbert, and then. Yeah. They bought in um, Tony Green and yourself. So yeah, four players, did. four big, yeah. big players for Newcastle United, all arriving within a few months of each other. That was exactly true, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I went back to the anniversary of the, the Fairs Cup do, yeah. uh, last year. Uh, it was nice. It would have been even nicer to have been part of it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't sign till 71, you see, so yeah. that was uh, 69. Yeah. But um, yeah, the he, Joe Harvey there, he got his money in his, he got his hand in his pocket. Yep. And uh, there was also Terry McDermott there, Cabby as well. Yes, yes, another good yeah. player, Tommy Cassidy as well would would have been yeah. there, would he, in them, them days? Yeah, ah, he was. But like he's he's got Malcolm first, and then I think it was maybe Terry Hibbert and Malcolm. Yeah. Then it was me, and then Tony Green was a little bit later. Got you. But he got also you. got Terry McDermott at the time as well. Yeah. So there the weren't bad signings then, were there? And Malcolm had... McDonald, Terry Hibbert, um, Terry McDermott, myself, and then Tony Green. They were good signings. They were very good signings. Without a doubt, you already got Bobby Monker that, that was there yeah. and, and, and the skipper. Um, you got Jinky, uh, Jimmy Smith that would have yeah. been there at the time. Stuart yeah, Barraclough yeah. as well, and John Tudor. 
You know, you, yeah. you've got a good team there at Newcastle and an ideally set up for uh, for cup runs. Definitely, yeah. I just don't think we had the consistency exactly uh, each week. Yeah, you know, yeah. either good or bad. They're a bit similar to that now, aren't they? You know, they they can they can have good results, they can have mediocre results, you know, sort of thing. So it's just being able to be very consistent week in week out. But we had a fair side on paper, a good side. You certainly didn't. You debuted against Wolverhampton Wanderers, didn't you? Yeah, it was. Yeah, and uh, luckily for me, we got off to a good start, two uh, nil, and then. It was quite funny, really, just before the game, with me being a centre-back and not bad in the air, you know, sort of thing. Yeah. And Joe Harvey says, can you just keep an eye on Dugan, mm. Derek Dugan? So, as you can imagine, he was like a superstar yeah. when yeah. I'm at Barnsley. Um, you know, the likes of him. And I'm then in the firing line and I'm playing against him. Mm. And uh, Week in, week out, to uh, Gabby, it was Man United, Everton, it was this, it, you know, it, it was, it, it took a, a bit to get used to, but uh, we got off to a great start there, and I did a good job on Dugan as well, I think we beat him 2-0, so off to a good start. Who was your most fearsome rivals in terms of, at Newcastle, you, you partnered uh, the great uh, Bobby Monker. You, yeah. you then moved on to, uh, to to Arsenal and to Birmingham, um, and and you played for Portland Timbers and Berry all all during the seventies. But in them days, today's football we tend to play one up front. But in them days, it was very much a strike force and a deadly duo. Who was the most deadliest that you played against? Yeah, that's a good question, isn't it? There's quite a few spring to mind. You know, there's Toshak and sort yeah. of Keegan, weren't there? Mm-hmm. Radford and Kennedy at Arsenal. Uh, Charlie George, and I'm just trying to think who was uh, up front with him there at Arsenal. Yeah, there was quite a few good pairs around, weren't there? There was yeah. Osgood around, weren't there? Martin Chivers and Gilzine, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, some good pairs about. the George Jordan at Leeds, isn't there, with Alan Clark or yep. whoever. You know, so... There was some good pairings around there, was, yeah. And it, our pairing wasn't bad, was it? Malcolm McDonald, John Tudor. No, I thought so, that, I thought they were absolutely uh, first class. And, and and also, it must have been just before you left Newcastle. Did you not win the Texaco Cup? Because you beat Birmingham City in 75, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, the Texaco Cup, yeah. 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 Guess who was captain? Yeah. Me? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I was there at that game at St Andrews. Was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, at the time, there was the Te- Texaco Cup. What, what was the other cup, uh, Gabby, what, at the Watney's, time? We had the Watney's Cup as well, didn't we, in the Texaco Either Cup? Was, weren't we? Yeah. And then there was that uh, Anglo-Italian one, weren't That's there? right. Did you ever play in that? We won it, yeah. Oh, I did, did you play win the Anglo Italian? Because there were some right nutters out there in Italy that you played against, didn't you? There must be some right stories that you brought back to uh, to Tyneside from uh, from it- Italian journeys. Fiorentina, we played them in the final, yeah. and, and we played obviously to get to the final. You had to play, you know, other other uh, clubs as well. Yeah, but it was just a different sort of uh, pace to our game. We we were sort of charging about a lot in, in this country, whereas when you were playing against them, it was like knocking it about a bit at the back and, and you know, that kind of thing, skillful. Mm. Whereas that was, it probably suited our game, uh, you know, our game, really. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's an experience playing against uh, different clubs from different countries. So that's what we found there. But we did manage to win it. and uh, But it doesn't mean a right lot, does it? But, you know, it's something that you can say that you've done, isn't it? Well, certainly is. When I was a kid, it was a, it was a big tournament for me. Because I remember Birmingham City in 1972 being involved in that competition. And it, it was great that the Italians had come over and play. Yeah? So it, it was almost like proper European football. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was a change from going to the English clubs, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, if you're on a flight and you're going to Torino or wherever, Fiorentina, Sampdoria, whatever. You know, it is a nice change, really. And, but uh, yeah, it's it's nice to have taken part in all all the big competitions that the there was at the time. 
you know, the FA Cup, the League Cup, whatever, you know, and the Anglo-Italian Texaco Cup. But we used to play a lot, uh, Gary. There, there were a lot of games about, you know, sort of thing. But that Texaco Cup as well, that was almost like an Anglo-Scottish Cup, wasn't it? Because Scottish teams were involved in that competition, wasn't they? Yeah, they were, yeah. We went up to uh, Scotland on a couple of occasions. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to think who we played. It weren't Rangers or Celtic. I'm just trying to think who it was. No, it's, uh, yeah, no, I can't just think who it was. But, yeah, playing against the Scots as well, you know, there was always that little bit of niggle, weren't there? You know, if you go up there and then the crowd are on your back, aren't they? The Scottish fans. And then they come back to Newcastle and we give them the same, you know. So, yeah, it was a, a decent competition, but it was one of them situations where there was a lot of matches being played. You know, and you've got them as well. And you've got, the, you know, the Texaco and you've got the Anglo-Italian. It was a lot of games. If you could replay one game from the 70s, what game would it be and why? If I could re re replay, yeah, yeah. Um, Any game that you played in, and you think, you know what? I'd love to replay that game <laughs> for whatever uh, reason. I think the one that springs to mind is the semi-final of the FA Cup. Yep. You know, I've never felt as pleased. Uh, but we had a, It wasn't an easy game for us. That I don't know if you've ever seen the the uh, you know the the re you know, the television replay on that one. Great but pass by Terry Ibbitt, by the way. Aye, well, what a pass that was, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. I would say that is the one that sticks out in my mind, is that, and the elation that you've got, knowing that you've got to Wembley for the first ever time for, for the likes of me, which I, I'll always remember that feeling of, uh, you know, we're at Wembley. But uh, there's been a lot of games over the years where you've, you've enjoyed and, you know, when you score your first goal or whatever. And, uh, yeah, there's been a lot of good memories. But that one does bring to mind, that one. And and that was, of course, a brace by uh, by Supermac. The first goal was pretty much hustle and bustle. And then the second goal, the, the ball through from, uh, from well, Terry and Malcolm just finished it, as he always did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if, you, if you're on the halfway line with Malcolm McDonald and you get a ball knocked over your head, you're not going to get there before him. No. Nah. And I don't know if you've ever seen the replay of it, but uh, is it Colin Waldron? And he's trying to grab him <laughs> and he's trying to get his arms around him to pull him back because he's that, but he shrugs him off. He's that strong and he Perfect. gets into the box and has a shot with his left, I don't know if he's left foot or right foot. He comes back out and then he knocks it in. But uh, what a great lad to have in your team because we were under the cost a lot there against them. And then the outlet ball was that one over the top and do your business, uh, Malcolm, yeah. And he certainly did on that day. We were quite lucky, but, it, it, you know, that's the way football can go, can't it? You can play well and still get beat. Yeah, of course you can. But, uh, and in the uh, in the 70s, Malcolm was also involved in the, in the Superstars, wasn't he? And done very well in that, I have to say. He <laughs> did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Because they used to do all different different things, didn't they? And That's then right, yeah. It, it, would, it would lead to the sort of sprinting and, mm -hmm. and things like that, yeah. But he was really, really quick. I don't know if there's anybody now that w that looks as quick. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, and he got the power as well. And he's a great, great bloke to see. Uh, I, see him, I see him when I go back to Newcastle. And it, it's great just to catch up with him. But uh, what a great player to have in your team. Because he's doing a lot of um, Q and A's, isn't he, up there at St James's Park? There, there seems to be a pub that um, that Malcolm's. Uh, it's on. He's got a YouTube channel, and and it's all about. I can't. The name escapes me. But it's all about Newcastle United, and he uh, he seems to be doing very well in in, in that side of, of football. Yeah. Because Malcolm was never never slow coming forward, was he? He wasn't, no, not at all. <laughs> and uh, the, the writer at the time up there for us was a fellow called John Gibson. Okay. And, uh, and Steve Wraith, who is a promoter up there. That's the boy. And they meet as a threesome. Yep, that's it. Uh, in one of the pubs, one of the pubs close to the ground. Yep. And uh, Malcolm gives his opinion on how things will go. And then John Gibson, the, uh, the writer... Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're discussing things and, yeah, he does it on a regular basis, he does, yeah, which I'm really pleased for him. 
who were your heroes uh, growing up, Pat? Who, who did you want to be and what made you want to be a footballer in the first place? Yeah, um, I think when I was growing up, uh, I was a defender and I, I used to try to imitate, uh, do you remember a player called Dave Mackay? You know, yeah. big and strong, you mm. know, all this sort of stuff. And then, but my favourite, I would say, was Bobby Charlton. Yeah. Bobby Charlton yeah. was the one that I sort of thought, oh, God, he's the, he's the best thing since sliced bread. You know, when I'm that young kid growing up, but who would have thought that uh, maybe 10, 12 years later that I'd be on the same pitch as the likes of Bobby Charlton, you know? So, but it was a great, it was great for me being able to, be very good as a young kid, play for Barnsley under under 11s, under 12s, under 14s, and then the town team under 15s, and I played for. So it was a, a, a step up all the time. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I'm leaving school, and me and my dad went to Sheffield United, where their manager, John Harris, uh, we had a meeting with him, and he just said, uh, Pat, we've we've heard about you. You know, my scouts have talked about you, and uh, we'd like to offer you a week's trial. Right. So, but Barnsley wanted to sign me for three years. You know, apprentice yeah. professional, and I sort of bottled out of that. And I said to me, Dad, I don't I don't want to take a chance just in case it backfires with regard to having having a trial for a week. So then, you know, the following day, I signed for Barnsley. Apprentice professional, 15 years old. Whose boots did you have to clean? Can you remember? I used to clean everybody's boots, yeah. <laughs> that was my job. You know, whereas the other, the other apprentices were out in the stands and on the pitch. Yeah. But my job was to, I was in, in inside, uh, you know, what with the showers and towels and, and training gear, but boots especially, we had a boot room. To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to www.patreon.com forward slash SRB media or just follow the links in the description. Thank you.